one day when I was in Toronto, Carol Bull called me up and said, we're having a meeting mm -hmm. um, of playwrights. Uh, uh, Tom Hendry has organized this. It's up at a library somewhere. Uh, so we went up there and, uh, and there were a bunch of playwrights assembled and uh, Tom and Carol talked about the Gaspé uh, uh, conference that, where they'd issued a, a manifesto about what playwrights create a playwright scene in Canada with uh, playwrights had some kind of power and got some money uh, and were able to continue to write. And then we, uh, uh, from that, uh, they organized a, 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 a meeting uh, in a, uh, I guess they rent, started to rent a, a hall that was up above a, a, a kind of a a body shop or something on DuPont, near where the first um, factory lab theater was. In fact, right beside it. Hmm. Uh, but And um, I remember that it was a rainy night and we went up there and uh, they uh, uh, actually established uh, a playwrights co-op, uh, the, pur the purpose of which was to duplicate uh, members uh, plays on an old uh, what you, mimeograph machine they wow. had to turn. Right. Uh, Carol Bolt would, uh, and for people who don't know, Carol Bolt was one of our preeminent playwrights mm -hmm. and, uh, with, uh, who died a few years ago. Um, and uh, and uh, Tom Hendry uh, and uh, uh, Len Peterson uh, who was writing these wonderful plays for CBC Radio and Television, um, and Jack Gray, who was later a bigwig in the ACTRA. Um, uh, and uh, th there was a bit of a movement. They had tried to create a union within ACTRA uh, to be uh, the playwrights, uh, speak for playwrights. And Carol was saying, no, I don't want these white guys uh, to <laughs> males to 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 speak for me mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> as Carol as well that, uh, as you know mm -hmm. that was Carol mm -hmm. and uh, so uh, we uh, we did but we formed this thing and uh, uh, we hired a director and a dramaturg uh, he, he would uh, there was a sort of a mattress it was kind of a hippie organization, uh, a mattress in the back room where you could lie down and read scripts. And uh, <laughs> they were uh, handed out to various playwrights to read and uh, mm. to decide whether they would be uh, suitable for mimeographing. Right, <laughs> and, uh, wow. And uh, one, uh, we had to sort of uh, reform the, uh, the way in which uh, comments were made because, uh, you know, uh, as, uh, one playwright sent out a, a letter a response to another playwright that his script was a pile of shit, you know. Oh. Uh, it was, and it was decided that this was not diplomatic. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then um, uh, we, uh, that we evolved into a, a service organization that did more than just mimeograph plays mm -hmm. uh, called uh, Playwrights Canada. Uh, and uh, uh, then uh, as uh, we tried to negotiate uh, some actual standards with uh, the Professional Association of Canadian Theatres, and uh, they, wouldn't, they didn't want to do that. Um, but the Canada Council and others were saying we really need to know how much playwrights should be paid for their scripts. Mm -hmm. um, at one point we had a negotiating uh, thing where uh, we had heard that PAC didn't want a contract hanging over their heads. Uh, and I remember Paul Ledoux, I think, was there. Uh, and uh, what we did was created a form co contract and suspended it from the ceiling. <laughs> Um, but wait a second, let me get this straight. So they wouldn't mind getting contracts for actors, but they didn't want a contract for the playwright. Yeah, they had enough trouble with equity. Okay, okay. Um, 
but gradually we created a kind of a form contract and mm. we, we divided the, uh, the organization so that we would have a kind of uh, one unit that was really professional playwrights uh, as opposed to just the, the larger unit that was mm. to serve uh, all, players. all playwrights. Right. Yeah. And uh, we called that the uh, um, Playwrights Union of Canada. Right. We were members of both. Um, and then there was a bit of a war because uh, uh, the executive directors, uh, uh, specifically of, uh, of Playwrights uh, Canada, uh, there was a, they sort of uh, liked to gather a little support group right. uh, within, and, and it was like sabotaging the efforts of the Playwrights Union to come up with a contract. Hmm. But finally we came up with guidelines, and then we got the guidelines more and more, mm -hmm. um, uh, solid and detailed and mm -hmm. uh, some, with some actual commitments um, and in order to get rid of this problem of our, our being at odds we reunited these two organizations so that uh, um, it, and called it PAC the Playwrights Union of Canada because it was mm -hmm. uh, no it, I've, I've made a slight mistake the when we divided it up, we we made it in, into a guild. The, right. That was going to be the professional organization. So then, when we brought the two organizations back together, we called it a union. Mm -hmm. And then some people got annoyed because they didn't like the idea of unions for some reason. I don't know who that was. Mm -hmm. And then, so and they didn't like the, the word puck. They thought it was too macho or something. Uh, and, uh, it's very hockey. It's very Canadian. So, so more so, recently, we changed it to the Playwrights Guild of Canada. Yes. Uh, so, uh, so I. Uh, that's the whole course of the of the guild, and I've been involved at every step. I was mm -hmm. president of the uh, Playwrights Canada, I think, uh, president of the guild, um, mm -hmm. president of the union. Right. Um, uh, I was on the negotiating committee at various points, uh, right. and uh, so now I'm uh, just sort of um, somebody who uh, supports the efforts and, hmm. uh, with great, great uh, enthusiasm. What are some of the big crises, the crises that have happened uh, that stand out in your mind with the Guild? Um, well, there was a lot of politics around forming a separate organization. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, sometimes it felt uh, like we were our own worst enemies. Mm -hmm. um, I remember uh, we asked for a management review of one of the uh, directors of Playwrights Canada. And mm -hmm. uh, um, she took this as a sign that she should uh, resign. Right. Um, and uh, but the a number of important uh, people all along had uh, uh, supported her and uh, felt really upset. That was one. Mm -hmm. uh, later on, there was you know questions of uh, of the. It was always uh, a lot of concern about financial uh, mm -hmm. w whether the organization could could survive on mm -hmm. the grants that it got and the playwrights' dues. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there was one occasion when uh, we hired a, a, a director who th we thought was going to be wonderful, and uh, she left uh, within a couple of weeks to <laughs> to for a more important job. Yeah. Um, Don't you hate that? Uh, and uh, uh, the um, the there was all uh, one of the one of the concerns. Uh, of Playwrights Canada was that, or at least of Puck, was that um, the the publishing of plays um, was becoming a big part of the organization, um, and uh, uh, Angela Ribeiro, who was the director at the time, uh, who had a background in publishing, uh, decided that really what we should do is have an independent publishing arm. Mm -hmm. um, because there was always a concern that uh, the members were saying, you know, why isn't our, my play published? And, uh, right. and that person's play was published. Right. And 
well, maybe mine is just getting in a duplicated copy, but theirs is getting a whole full press thing yeah, yeah, yeah. and all of that kind of thing. Uh, uh, so uh, I think partly to relieve the pressure, although uh, it may have given some access to other publishing grants, uh, mm -hmm. then uh, Playwrights Canada Press was formed. Correct. And as you know, we have a, um, a bit of a, a relationship, mm -hmm. but we're not... Uh, it doesn't the the uh, service organization doesn't control the press anymore in that right. way. The membership uh, uh, have given the power of publishing to a an editorial board. Right. Yeah. Which, fair enough. Makes sense. Uh, I don't know whether I agree with it mm. uh, because I thought it was one of the strengths of the organization to be able to have this. Yeah. Uh, uh, publishing part of it, uh, mm -hmm. one of the things we do, uh, like in the the dramatists guild in the states, mm -hmm. they, as uh, I think, publish as well as perform all of these services, contract services, and so on for their members. So. Right. Yeah. I one of the things I'm forever grateful for to the Playwrights Guild of Canada is enforcing. Um, the fact that we do get 10% of the box office, I, I find it so frustrating oh, yeah. that theaters after theater will constantly try to get around that. I want to say, oh, well, you don't really, oh, it's so hard to put on theater, to yeah. pay, pay you playwrights 10%. That's so, I, how can we put on theater? Yeah. And I feel like saying, well, then just don't use a script. Just no, I remember uh, how we celebrated when we got the 10% mm -hmm. uh, uh, agreed to by... Uh, most of the theaters, although there are still some big theaters in the country that don't uh, yes. try to get around that and do get around it. Oh, yes. But yeah. the, the return to the playwright, it, 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 the bigger the theater, it means that uh, it's easy, well, maybe not easy for us to say something about, well, we'll forgive you the 10% mm -hmm. because I know I'm going to get some money out of this that's good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so that's always been one of these these uh, conflicts. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and it ultimately we just want a living wage, you know. The living wage. The uh, that should be our that should be our banner. <laughs> Give playwrights a living wage. Yeah. I started to write libretti for opera, so mm -hmm. uh, I thought I uh, I was uh, in Banff uh, yeah. at a workshop uh, to write. Uh, working with a composer, yeah. and uh, uh, we, there was a big opera conference, and uh, mm. so the librettists got a big banner and marched around uh, Banff, uh, saying the uh, librettist liberation movement. <laughs> <laughs> <That's great. laughs> And um, so then there was a general meeting, and um, this one, one of the the German uh, opera company the personnel got up and said, "I don't agree with this union." <laughs> really? Yeah. Really? And, and we tried to assure them that it was a, a, a humor. Yeah. But. It wasn't their kind of humor. <laughs> it's not funny. <laughs> it's not funny. The non liberation of the liberatists here in Germany. That's funny. Yeah. Uh, great.